Well, Britannia Music Hall is the world's oldest surviving music hall. It dates back to 1857. In 1906, they added a freak show, a waxworks, a rooftop carnival, a basement zoo, cinema was a big part of the building. So they renamed the building Panopticon because it comes from the Greek. Pan, meaning everything, opti, to see. And you could see everything under the one roof for the one ticket price. Well, architecturally speaking, this building, it was developed in 1857 by Thomas Gildard and Robert H. M. McFarlane. Originally, they were going to turn this old warehouse, which dates back, in fact, to the 1770s, and they were going to convert it into a department store. But, unfortunately, the Trongate was no longer the poshest street in Glasgow, which it had been about 20 years previously. In 1857, it was described as one-eighth of a mile of iniquity, with over 130 brothels and over 200 shabines, illegal drinking houses. So it was really rough and they decided to provide the local population with something that they could utilise, a music hall. The archaeology in this building is, is, is quite tough at times, particularly the actual conservation works on the building, because this is not just a listed building, this has got one of the highest listings imaginable in the UK. It has an A-listed exterior, a separate A-listed -listed interior, and it's also noted as a national monument. We were also eligible for world monument status. One challenging part that's finished and was completed before I actually came here was the reconditioning of the stage or the, the reawakening of the stage as Judith calls it. The next challenging part would probably be to get the balcony to a state in which we could allow people up to watch shows. That will cost and it will take a lot of work. We're lucky I suppose because we are blessed with the fact the cleaners never did their job. They just swept everything under the floorboards. If you go into any other old theatre, you won't find the amount of debris we found in here. Checking the third floor for again for some artefacts and they found some Victorian pennies at Queen Victoria's head on it. I mean, when I first walked in, there was literally beer bottles sitting on the benches that had been left there since 1938. Today, this building is internationally famous. Yeah. But for local Glaswegians, it really is a case of they pass this building day after day. Some people come up to me and they say, God, I've been, I've been living in, working in Glasgow for 50 years and walk past this building every day and I never knew it was up there. Locally, I think it's less well known than it is in America or Germany or Holland. We get lots of people in. Some of them say they live in the East End and they hadn't even heard of the Panopticon. No before I performed, but when I came in, I learnt about the history of the, about the place who had performed here and uh, how many people it held. Acting as a volunteer and showing people around, so many of them say, um, I didn't know this place, I've lived here all my life and I didn't know. On, on the other hand, one or two people come in and say, oh, my granny used to come here. There's a lot of people in Glasgow, even local to the East End, who haven't heard, or even if they have, they've never stepped inside because you always think, it's on my doorstep, I can visit any time, but that quite often doesn't happen. To perform on the stage here, now that we've got the stage back, is just, words can't describe, it's just marvellous. To be on a stage, to think about the performers like Stan Laurel appeared here, and other performers that appeared on this very stage. I, I, I really enjoy playing on, on the stage, you know, because of, of the associations with, with Stan Laurel and all the other people. Oh, past or present. I'd like to have seen Stan Laurel perform here. I'd love to go and see Dan Leno. Oh, looking at performances past and present, there are so many. Oh, gosh. I suppose, I suppose the famous ones, I mean, people like, like Stan Laurel or, um, or Archie Leek, uh, who was, of course, Cary Grant. Um, swinging, swinging from the trapeze up there, that, that would be interesting. The one act that has always appealed to me is Dr. Walford Bodie's electric act that he used to do in here in 1896. 
he was the first one to really use electricity in his act and he did all sorts of bizarre things. One of the things he did in here was bring in a Tesla coil, get a courting couple out of the audience, stand next to the coil and try and kiss and of course all the static electricity would make sparks go between them. Well these days we have been open to the public now since 2003. We started off just with music hall representations, doing the music hall songs. Musicians, uh, children's shows, we've got a puppeteer coming in I believe to do, do some shows in, in the future. I mean, we've been doing silent films for a number of years. We've also been doing Lauren Hardy film nights for a number of years, but we now also do cabaret, burlesque. We have magic shows that are dedicated to just magic called the Merchants of Magic. We get a bit of saucy burlesque in, but we stick it, keep it to traditional. So we have a whole range of the sort of things that you would have seen in the music hall back in the day, but we give it a modern twist as well sometimes.